Good morning and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here with us today. Hope you'll come and join us again. Please don't forget that Holy Communion will be part of our worship today. We invite you to get elements ready to partake there in your home as well. Uh, don't forget also we have Wednesday worship with Holden Evening Prayer at 7 o'clock on Wednesdays. And we're looking at some of the forgotten or overlooked miracles of Jesus. And this week we're looking at the story of the cursing of the fig tree. As many of you know, those members of Redeemer here, we started a pictorial directory a month or so ago. And uh, some of those pictures are starting to trickle into our community and, and some here at the church. If you didn't make a purchase, those are coming to the church. And we have some of those here available. If uh, yours has come in, Debbie has emailed you. And we invite you to come by and pick it up. Uh, also, don't forget that photography hasn't finished yet. Uh, the uh, COVID-19 outbreak prevented us from uh, finishing all our photography, and it's not scheduled to finish until August. So uh, while your pictures are coming in, it'll still be a little while for the books to come in uh, because uh, we haven't even finished all of our people getting their pictures made, including me. So I think I ought to be in the directory somewhere, but uh, anyway, uh, so that hasn't happened quite yet. Also this morning, uh, we had a little bit of trouble at Sunday school with uh, the Zoom uh, app that has, uh, they just did a whole bunch of updates and uh, it might be that you need to um, update yours or re-download or something in order to, to get to work for some of the other things we have coming up. Amanda. I'll get out of your way. You don't have to get out of my way. If you need help with any of those Zoom downloads or anything, feel free to give me a call and I'll help you out with that. Um, other things that are going on, um, as far as Faith Launch, what we call Sunday School, um, I am meeting with families individually um, to read Bible stories and to talk about our highs and our lows for the week, our happies and our sads, um, and to pray with families and um, just talk about some, some stories and some experiences that we're having right now. If that's something that your family is interested in, please email me or give me a phone call and we'll set up a time for that. Also, we're still collecting shoes and I see a lot of shoes out there, um, which is really, really wonderful. Remember, we're collecting specifically men's and women's tennis shoes and men's boots and feminine hygiene products. Um, and these are all going to help our friends um, at lunch on the lawn. And so I think we're making a delivery to those. Um, the last Saturday of the month is what it sounds like. This Saturday, oh, the month is going by so fast. <laughs> this Saturday, we're making a delivery. Um, but they always need shoes, um, so we can continue collecting those if we need to. Anything I'm forgetting, Pastor Gary? That's all I can think of right now. Okay, all right. Thank you. Let us prepare for our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection, yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O oh God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. 
Jesus Christ loves us and frees us from our sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, be. 
let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. time for our children's message and today I want to talk about this pair of pliers you might I don't know if you've ever seen a pair of pliers before but this most dads have one of these in their toolbox or grandparents or even even um, uh, moms sometimes have a toolbox with this kind of thing in it as well and Pliers are really important because sometimes you need to grab something and you need to really hold it tight and your fingers just aren't good enough. Or sometimes they might be down in a little hole and you can't get your hand down in there, but you can reach the pliers down in there and hold it. The pliers have lots and lots of different uses, but the thing is, Another way to think about pliers is that they are a helper to us. When I needed pliers, lots of times I would already be involved in a job and I might be lying on my back under something and I would need my pliers and they're across the room or on the other side of the garage. And I would look to one of my children, to Michael or to Jeremy, and I'd say, would you bring me the pliers? And they would go get the pliers. They were a helper to me. So the pliers are a helper. My children were helpers. We have helpers all around. Today we're going to hear about that Jesus says God is going to send a helper to us. It has lots of different names, advocate, counselor, companion, uh, friend. But helpers, one way we can think about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps us in life. It comforts us when we're sad or worried. It encourages us. It fills us with hope. The Holy Spirit is one of those big helpers in life that we depend on. And that's what we're talking about today. Let's pray. Almighty God, send your spirit to us. Help us to have faith in you. Help us to know your love and to love others. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 17, verses 22 through 31. Paul stood in front of Eurotagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God. 
and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For several years, the Burke family has had this tradition of watching the movie Rise of the Guardians on Easter Sunday. It's an animated film. It's the story of four characters that are responsible for holding space for the wonder and hope and dreams of childhood. Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy, the Easter Bunny, and the Sandman are guardians against Pitch Black, the Boogeyman. But the guardians need a fifth member to help drive out that darkness. Jack Frost is called upon to be a guardian, but he doesn't see his place in the world at all. There's a clip of this movie that shows North, Santa Claus, speaking to Jack Frost about how people see him. The burly Santa Claus character uses a set of those nesting dolls to demonstrate how people view him. Jack opens the painted dolls to reveal a jolly image of Santa. And then the next one shows Santa as mysterious. And as the dolls get smaller, Santa is painted as fearless and in caring. But at his center is a tiny wooden doll with large eyes that are wide open. Wonder. All of the layers of the Santa Claus character work from the place of wonder at the center. He sees wonder everywhere. He tells Jack Frost that this is what lets him see the lights and the trees and the magic in the air. That 
wonder is what he puts out into the world. And the scene ends with Santa Claus asking Jack Frost, what is at his center? And we could ask the same question. What is at the center of our lives? I think it's a tricky question during this time. Looking back about four months ago, we may have answered that question very differently than we would now. Months ago, we may have said that our job was at our center. You might have said, Playing lacrosse or playing the trumpets in the school band is at our center. Or maybe our family, or it could have been volunteering that was our center. What if we looked more at qualities that might be our center? These are all good things. Kindness, generosity, service. We each have these pieces of us that are important. But there's still something about that center, that core. If we ask the followers of Jesus that same question, I wonder what their answers would be. I think it might be a safe bet to say that Jesus would likely be the center of their community, the core. But what we know about this story creates an issue for the disciples. In the reading for today, Jesus is teaching them in between washing their feet and then Jesus being arrested and tortured and crucified. Jesus has hinted to the disciples that he will be leaving them. But the disciples had a hard time truly understanding that message. In John 14, there are lots of phrases that would cause me to wonder what's going on. If you love me, the Father, he will give you another advocate. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. That's enough to make anybody's head spin. But in and among all of this, Jesus makes sure that the disciples know that another advocate is coming. Jesus was an advocate, but he was only with them for a short while. He was bound by a specific time and location, but this new advocate, this new advocate will be with them always. This advocate will abide, will live in their very being. This advocate will be with all followers of Jesus in every time and every place, with Peter, James, Mary, and Martha, but also with you and with me and with the disciples that are yet to be born. This advocate is the Holy Spirit. When Jesus ascended into heaven, the Holy Spirit was promised to the disciples, was promised to us. The Holy Spirit is with us always and within us always. So what is truly our center, our core? Is it our work, our education, our possessions? As much as we love our family and love serving others, is that our core? No. As wonderful as generosity and kindness are, that's not our core either. As children of God, as disciples of Christ, the Holy Spirit is our center. God, the Holy Spirit, God who is love, is at our center. God has promised to walk with you and with me. God has promised to live within you and me. The God of love is our center, is our core. And if we took this idea of 
of the nesting dolls that the Santa Claus and Rise of the Guardians took. We may have our job on the outside, and one layer deeper we might see our family and friends. And opening up the next nesting doll might reveal our interests and hobbies. And as the doll gets smaller and more intimate, our hopes and dreams might be painted on the surface. All sorts of layers could make up our nesting dolls, but at the center, at the core, the Holy Spirit will be there. There may be times that we want to keep our center, our core, buried deep underneath all of those layers. The Holy Spirit is a way of pushing us out of our comfort zone. But what would it look like to allow the Holy Spirit to impact each of those layers that surround our center? What does it look like? when the Holy Spirit seeps into our work life? What does it look like when the Holy Spirit shows up with us at the dinner table? What does it feel like when the Holy Spirit gets to help shape our hopes and our dreams and our goals? Like the center for Santa Claus led him to put wonder out into the world. How will we allow our center, the Holy Spirit, the very embodiment of love, pour through us out into the world? God's love is abundant, never-ending, unconditional, and we get to be a part of sharing it with all people. In these uncertain times, we may have a shortage of toilet paper, but there is no shortage God's love. How do we share God's love with the people that live next door to us, both in our homes, but also here at Redeemer, our church home? How do we share God's love with the people that, that stop by our blessing box and pick up some breakfast cereal? How do we share God's love with those that are in the hospital with COVID-19? How do we share God's love with the medical professionals who are putting their lives on the line to care for society? While we're missing being here together in this building, sharing God's love with one another, the Holy Spirit is up to something. The Holy Spirit is working within each of us to reach out into the world. What is God's love? calling you to put out into the world. Amen.
God's people, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God of glory and grace, what a comfort it is to be able to lean into your care, to feel you enfold us in your arms of love, to know that you watch over us and walk before us in life. You have made us, O oh God, and we are yours. May our lives respond in praise and worship through all our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. loving God, great is your faithfulness. In all of life, help us to trust you more. As we struggle and wrestle with our worries and anxiety, help us to know that you are by our side and that the power of our fears is nothing compared to the power of your love. Help us to turn our troubles over to you in complete trust. Fill our lives, O Comforter, and give us your peace. Lord, in your mercy, God of compassion, in so many ways we need you. Be with those who are sick, those who mourn, those who are alone, those who are afraid. Bless health care workers and first responders. Touch our world with your healing hand. Bless all those in need, O oh God, and especially those whom we remember before you. Help us to be your hands of love and mercy in our world. Lord, in your mercy, Prince of Peace, touch our world with your peace. We pray that in all of life, you might be there with your comfort and love. Make yourself known and transform our world. Guide the leaders of our world toward you. Transform our broken world into your wholeness and give us your peace. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you.